All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my new video where we are going to be playing Mordekaiser into Katarina. Just going to give you guys a little bit of an instructional because I think this is actually one of Mordekaiser's best matchups in the mid lane. Really able to stop a lot of what Katarina is looking to do with her snowball and with the way she is looking to lane. You can really take her out of the fights if she uh, gets a little bit too far ahead with your ultimate as well, and you're able to stop her ult with your E. So I think this is a good matchup, and you guys should look to abuse quite a bit so let's get into this um so level three can be a little bit of a struggle if he gets a gank assist but you are able to bully her quite heavily you want to look to use your taste of blood proc post q dagger throw let's see how this lane goes it's gonna taunt her a little bit So I think we have the scaling advantage here. Yeah, that's why I was scared of was the Wukong level two. Just want to back off a little bit there. Just need to be extremely careful before I have my more of my defensive measures in my E and my W. Jesus, this guy's super aggro on cat. I'm gonna go just W second because he's playing so aggressive. Oh, I do not have much auto damage. Uh, nope, I thought he was gonna be looking to invade red. I should be able to bully her now a little bit with my level three. And there it is. It's just a nice, really simple way to counter Katarina with your base tankiness. It's really hard for her to get um, kills. I could have followed her even if she didn't fail that flash. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is just be a bit of a neutralizer here. Just try and... Um, zoner as much as i can as possible with farm i can also if she uses her um daggers i port those out with the ultimate so she won't have access to um e resets so there's a bunch of different ways you can look to oh this guy's tilted yeah he just gave me a huge freaking trade um it's always good to take those kind of trades when you are looking to back because she's gonna have to look to back pretty soon i'm going to come back with the blasting one and just be able to absolutely destroy her in these trades uh, i'm going to look to go a little bit aggressive here because i think most katarina players tilt pretty hard when they're not able to snowball um they really rely on that i'd say the reason why you see a lot of katarina mains is because you're able to snowball about 55 to 60 percent of the time and uh, the other times you're not able to snowball you just lose the game now this is where i'm really really um, this is the Katarina Rome timing right here when I'm backing the lane. Oh God, please. Th this is what happens to me so often is the Katarina Rome's on this timing after me beating her in lane. And she just gets a free double kill. Oh, thank God they played it pretty safe. Is she going to miss farm here in the mid? Please don't fight. Okay, good. Okay. That scared the shit out of me, dude. I, I need to try and follow. I absolute best to follow this Katarina around the map. That was just a really bad timing for me to look to follow because I had a really big uh, minion wave stacked up. So she can do that kind of trade. I don't mind. I have uh, Doran Shield. I have double pots. And I'm probably going to hit level 6 before her so I can look for an all-in. And she's playing hyper-aggressive because I think she knows that she has to... Uh, Snowball to win the game. I look to get. Uh... Yep. She has nowhere to E, and we just auto her down. Don't even need to use our abilities. I'm gonna just save my abilities in case Wukong was around. This looks like it's gonna be uh, turning out to be a pretty good game. We have uh, our jungler is doing extremely well. 
because um, Wukong wasn't really able to get much out of his uh, level 2 gank, which can be pretty important um, for champions like that, because uh, the auto attack speed of the E and the extra armor shred on the Q can really um, force out some summoners out of the mid lane. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Whenever I look to record videos on my streams, I seem to get real, uh, really lucky on my teams. Just look to punish him. On these. He's really far behind, so he is going to be desperation roaming really soon. Um, so what I want to look to do here is just really keep pushing the waves into him and kind of invite ganks and invite pressure to myself, taking it off my team, allowing this... Jax to continue scaling up in the top lane and allowing my uh, Jinx uh, Lulu hyper scaling bot lane to really just kind of go um, un, uh, unannoyed and unganked. Yeah, I didn't get a stun off. What I do need to be careful about here is I need to make sure that I'm using my shield to its full extent because Katarina's ultimate gives a Kled-like healing reduction. So I need to make sure I'm using the shield and not double tapping my W and um, just getting a reduced heal as opposed to a really nice big shield. So I have a decent amount of gold. I don't want to push too far because Wukong did just show. I can look to 2v1 when I have my ultimate, but it's a pretty long cooldown. I know Katarina has her ultimate. In before triple catering to kill the bot yet, toward. I'm hoping there's not going to be any of those kind of shenanigans just keeping her in place. I can look to um, pressure now that I have my ultimate. He's super scared now because he knows that my ultimate timing. I'm sure at this elo you can at least get a good sense of what is uh, going on. Yeah, my first video my bot was pretty bad, but I was able to get a kill on that gin pretty early. So if he does any like crazy kind of jumps like I would assume he does on his E. The Death Realm was just such a great counter to Katarina because it takes away her ability to get resets by killing your team and also takes her ability away to, uh, to jump to minions, which is usually how she outplays you is by using her abilities, jumping out for a little bit, and then having her abilities up again real quick. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm literally just going to stay in this lane keep this Katarina in the lane as long as possible because I'm at any time the Wukong looks to gank me I can turn it into a 1v1 fight and then I have a health lead and also I'm gonna have a minion wave lead that the person that I don't ult is gonna be getting auto attacked by minions I do have a huge back here uh, yeah she's probably gonna go QSS but her an assassin going QSS is a bit of a win for me because then they're not building damage they have less threat against my team um yeah so my team is doing extremely well without me i don't have to look to roam for any kind of advantages i just want to keep um just farming and really nullifying what katarina is looking to do she is going dark harvest too so i'm making sure that i don't drop over the or drop under the uh 50 percent and I can stop this back with my my right there. Okay, good. I don't have name tags on. Let's look if she tries to fight here. So we got about a 20 CS lead here. Not if that E would have landed, I could have killed her for sure. She's kind of pretending like she's gonna back i think she's gonna stick around because she knows she's gonna push me in oh no all right we're good so we're gonna be able to get a cheater back here but we're not gonna miss out on any farm but if you are ever in this situation that katarina is in she's doing the correct thing and backing on a uh, cannon wave that can usually hold up under the tower a little bit longer than just the regular wave without the cannon so we have a 2700 cold pack which is absolutely huge and it looks like there aren't getting there aren't any really big threats but the great thing about mordekaiser is it doesn't really matter if there's one enemy that really snowballs quite well because you can um just take them out of the fights and really make it a 4v4 without the enemy's fed member 
So I'm getting a Rylize here because I'm going to be able to apply it to a, these three divers. It's always a really good item to pick up if your team just needs utility. My team has a shitload of damage right now. We have a Fed Echo, we have a strong Jax, and we have a strong Mordekaiser. Oh god, this is the Rome timing. This is the Rome timing. I don't, I don't care about that wave. I, I do not want to get another counter. Yeah, see, I fucking knew that shit was going to happen. Oh god. Oh god. I hope she's not strong enough to get a double here. Okay, she got one kill. So even though... Oh god, please have polymorph suit. Okay, oh no! Damn it, she's gonna get away. Cause she has boots and she's got that E. Shit, she still got a double even though I matched her. I shouldn't have ulted uh, the, the Yumi there. I was hoping the Lulu would just get away and not try and look to fight with me cause I was completely fine in that 2v1. So, Katarina came, got her double bot, which I'm always seems to happen to me cause um, if you didn't know, if you're a mid lane player, you should always look to roam to the bot lane because they're going to be a little bit under leveled. Eh, I don't really need to back right now. I'm going to wait for a nicer back. But again, if the Katarina is the only one that gets kills in this game, it's going to be completely fine because I'll be able to 1v1 her in the death realm. She is really, really far behind. Um, I might look to go a double spell pen because it looks like I'm going to have a lot of squishy champions. See how she's able to really just be slippery and hard for me to catch? Um, just being able to E-dash around and it's hard for me. That's why the Realm of Death is just so insane because she has no E-targets. She's going to E something. It's going to either be a dagger that she sets up preemptively to kind of dodge out with her W, which is what the good countering players do, but they rarely do that. A lot of the times you're just going to see E's that go on top of yourself. And she's just looking for a little bit extra damage. So, completely fine if the Katarina wants to. Do anything. You wanna jump in, bitch? I will wreck your face. <laughs> this Wukong can't do anything for her because they know I win the 2v1. This is so nice. If you're one of those people that sometimes struggle against ganks, Mordekaiser is great because he has so much anti-gank. That's why you see in pro play, a lot of the times the Mordekaiser's are picked in the weak side where they want to focus their bot side a lot is because he has a lot of anti-dive and anti-gank mechanics with his ability to 2v1 similar to something like a, a darius can live through 2v1s or allow he even invites 2v1s because she can get overall more dps out now i'm going to be a little bit concerned here because on her back timing i think that she's just going to be more concerned with trying to go get kills okay no she's good here yeah, we're going to go just at super pure damage here. Build, we're going to go a double spell pen. Because I'm going to want the healing cut because they gave Xin Zhao a lot of healing. Um, Wukong gets a lot of healing from his passive Conquer, and then he's going to have Ravenous Hunter. And then, of course, Gunblade Katarina is going to provide a lot of healing. And then Yumi. So they th this team is really heal heavy. So getting the early Morellos is going to be good for a Mordekaiser that is snowballing and doing uh, quite well. Oh. He does not. I don't think he realizes how close he came to death there. <laughs> Katarina! <laughs> you guys, when the chat goes up. <laughs> I hate season 10. Yeah, she's literally just looking for roams because she knows I absolutely wreck her in 1v1s. She's talking shit about her top and jungle. <laughs> nice trade, bro. I don't think she's gotten a single Dark Harvest frog on me. Maybe in the early game, like on that first trade. 
So I'm looking to just push these minions under tower. First for the minion damage is really nice on top of the tower. And second, it's going to be good to um, make her struggle a bit with CS and I can even force her off there. I'm really just going to try and bring as much pressure as possible um, to myself just so my team doesn't have to worry about the Wukong ganks. Go in if the price is right, bitch. Oh, did you? Oh, damn it. Oh, that was so close. I could have flashed away. And I would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, this this uh, Katarina is a little bit tilted. Alright, um, I'm, I don't think... Uh, are we going to go... I don't know what I'm going to finish first with uh, Morello's or Zonia's. This, is this a tuber? This is definitely going to be a tuber. Tiny wizard. I'm uh, starting to kind of mix up my format with uh, just doing the five tips as well as just kind of this in-game type of stuff. I know this is a little bit stompy, but I, 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 wanna, I just want to get a video out there. Um, <laughs> just of me kind of like just having fun with League and kind of showing my champion pool in actual play. Not just the more... What would you call it? One side is a bit of like theory, like my five tips, and this is more of uh, like in practice, kind of using what I'm trying to teach you guys and how to play games. My Mordecai's has been pretty disgusting recently. Just been getting a lot of really easy wins. Oh, this guy's even, dude. This Jax is a bro. Oh my god. Yeah, the, if you been watching the chat at all this game uh they're really <laughs> not happy with what's going on i know it's another mordekaiser game that i'm going to be posting gameplay of but it just this is just one of the champions i have the most fun on and i think that's one of the most important things for for content it's just actually having fun while recording and doing this stuff you can always tell like there's a couple youtubers that i feel like i've just kind of lost the enjoyment they get out of league of legends and they just they're just obviously doing it for the money i might get jumped on by a couple people here i think i can probably three of you one at this point if yumi's one of them because yumi's like half a champion she's more of a field multiplier I don't want to dive that. That's fine though. We got the win here. We're really putting this jungler behind. And if you ever, I think one of the biggest ways to carry a game is putting the jungler behind. It, it just, the jungle has so much agency in the early and mid game that putting them behind should be your priority if you're able to do that. That's why I picked ulting the Wukong over anyone else. It's so you can you actually heal off of <laughs> off of Harold a lot of the times because you you get a huge amount of shield when you um, hit the eye because it, this is just based off it doesn't matter if it's true damage or magic damage or AD damage. Oh whoops, I was trying to ward there whatever. But we lost a fight mid lane. That's not good. We should be able to push this in, take the tier two. Might be able to get an inhib, depending on how well Jax does into the, these guys. Or not an inhib, but at least a charge on the inhib tower. Not really any of them have too much of a threat where they could, like, one-shot me. <laughs> Holy shit, man. It is so fun to go spell pen. Usually I go, like, ninja tabbies. A lot of early defensives, but now it's like, fuck it, we're going double. We're doing double spell pen. Yeah, these guys need to stay near their tower. Okay. Let's 
dude. I have a Lulu ult. I'm gonna reach you. Oh, the Katarina came. Dude, look at all that. It's literally five, man. Okay, we're good. Just, we, we're, we're limit testing here. We're limit testing. All right, get the 400, get a little bit of that. And I think I can just sub this and we can grab our Seekers. Super strong right now. I was just kind of testing how, how far I could take that. We got a, it is definitely worth the death. I didn't give up a shutdown there and we uh, got a lot of damage down there. We're really, again, we're just causing so much attention on ourselves, which is going to be just a great way. And Jax's build is just insane. To be 21 minutes and have a three item Jax is pretty crazy. So this game's pretty much um, in the bag unless there's just some crazy shenanigans start happening. It would take like fucking like Faker coming out of the woodwork to, to carry them out of this game, in my opinion. Another nice thing about Mordekaiser, it's an inherent Yumi counter because if you ultimate the target that has the Yumi on them, you um, the Yumi detaches. And if there's a really keen um, assassin it's just ready for that to happen like if i just told this echo hey look for me ulting the yumi on someone he can literally just jump on top of the yumi when i detach the yumi whenever i want oh damn it i don't know why they're focusing me man we're gonna take katarina off of or the Yumi off the Katarina. As you can see there, the Yumi died right when I took her off. There was actually a bit of time where I, I was watching, right when Yumi came out, I was watching the LCK and people were actually putting Mordekaiser ADC into it with a Pike support. I think it, it didn't work, but there, there was definitely the idea of, hey, I can detach Yumi whenever I want. I'm gonna just back here, getting a nice big shield. So this game's um, pretty much over. If you guys have any questions for me um, with how to play Mordekaiser more, how to carry in different situations, you can um, hit me up in the comments. Always looking to help. Also have uh, a tournament that is going to be going on in the, on the 19th. Looks like we're going to have about three teams and the prize pool is going to be about $800 um, just from my YouTube ad revenue and just kind of a, a, as a big thank you to you guys for sticking with my channel. It's a lot of, it's really cool to see how quickly my channel has been growing to, through the pandemic or not the pandemic, but the, the coronavirus. So I guess uh, <laughs> a lot of you guys are just staying at home watching YouTube videos and I really appreciate you guys uh, checking out my stuff. Yeah, this Jax is just unkillable at this point. It's just fucking devastation. <laughs> A little bit toxic, but what can you do? Yeah, Lulu with an unkillable Jax is probably the, one of the scariest things. You could have to deal with a Lulu with a super strong Mordekaiser as well. Like the game's just the game is just over. Alright guys, that will um, end my video. Comment down below if there's a particular champion you want to see. I know I've been doing a lot of Mordekaiser, but I'm looking to do another Urgot, maybe a Zyra, Vagar, just kind of things in my wheelhouse um, to start champions I'm comfortable with and comfortable putting gameplay out with uh, i'm just gonna check the damage see if Jax out damaged me oh shit Jax out damaged me son of a bitch i guess he was hitting on that zin Zhao a lot where i was just kind of dealing with an assassin all right guys you take it easy